Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Business Solution Partners webinar about importing CSV records. Uh, my name is Matt, and I'm going to show you the basic steps of taking a Excel file with some customers and importing it to NetSuite. Now I have my import file already set up here in an Excel as a CSV file with some basic informational columns about each customer, name, status, sales rep, phone number, address information, and whether or not that address is the default billing and the default shipping. Now I've chosen myself as the sales rep for each customer so I can more easily show you the imports after I'm done with the CSV import routine. Once I have this file saved, I'm going to log into NetSuite. You can see I'm already logged in here. I'm going to navigate to Setup, Import Export, and then Import CSV Records. I'm logged in as an administrator, so that gives me the ability to import CSV records. Before um, trying this, make sure that your role, whatever it may be, has the permission to handle customers and CSV imports. Once I'm in the import assistant, I can start choosing what kind of records I'm going to import. For this import, I'm going to do a basic customer-only import. And since a customer is a relationship type, I'm going to choose relationships from the import type dropdown, and then customers only from the record type dropdown. We can leave character encoding alone, and I'm just going to import one file here. I already have my file set up. I'm going to choose that from my local computer. And then once that's uploaded, I'm going to hit Next. The Import Options screen shows up. I'm just adding new customers at this point. You have the option to update or add or update customers. For example, if you have customers in the system already and you want to update new information, you could use Update. And if your import file contains a mix of new customers and old customers you're updating, you can choose Add or Update. But in this case, I'm just going to be adding new customers. So let's just hit Next. Now what NetSuite does is it looks through your import file and it sees if any of the column headers actually match the NetSuite native fields. So it's already done some of the mapping for me. But we're going to go through and make sure all our fields are mapped correctly together. Let's see, Company name is from my customers.csv import file. And it's mapping my company name to company name in NetSuite on the right side. So just to recap, in the field mapping screen, on the left side, it's my Excel file and each column header. On the right side is all the available fields in NetSuite that I can import into. And my, uh, my test system has a lot of fields. You may see more fields than yours, or you may see less. It's not always going to be the same. But to go back to the mapping, it's taking my company name and it's mapping it to NetSuite company name. I don't have a currency column in my, in my uh, Excel file, so it's automating it since it's required, it's taking the USA as the default currency. You can change this default by clicking on the pencil next to the name of the column and choosing a default value. Once again, to set a default, hit the pencil icon next to the column and choose your default value. Now each line that's imported into NetSuite is going to have USA as the default currency. Next one down is status. So you saw my status in my Excel file. It's mapping that to customer status in NetSuite. And since it's a required field, you're going to have to import a status of some kind. I have statuses set up in my Excel file. And I'll just show you once again that I have customer for each since I'm importing customers and close one for two of them, and renewal for the third. You can also set a default if you don't have a status column in your import file. Just click on the pencil, and 
choose provide def default value. Okay, and here's another little trick in NetSuite. Each customer is either an individual or a company. So I am required to choose whether or not this company is an individual person or a company. And it's just a yes or no field. I'm going to provide a default of no, since all of my customers are companies, not individuals. Once again, customer individual is no, because all of my customers are companies. All right, next field is phone number. It's got that mapped automatically to the customer's phone number. And sales rep, I have that column in my Excel file, so I'm going to keep that as a mapped field to the customer sales rep in NetSuite. Okay, next I'm going to deal with these address fields. In NetSuite, the address fields will not be here under customer. They're going to be under the special customer address area. So just so you can see, these are expandable sections. And I'm collapsing the customer field and opening up customer address. And I'm going to add customer address number one and start adding the fields required to map my address into NetSuite. Okay. So after choosing one address field, NetSuite is warning me that when I map this address field, I can't just do one of the fields. I have to include all the required fields for the address. Since we're importing a new address, we need to have all required fields for each address included in our import. And you can see which fields will be required by looking at the NetSuite field name. And if it has REQ next to it, that means it's required. The only address field that's required right now is country. So I'm going to say OK. I understand. And here um, I'm going to start just adding clicking off each address field that I have in my Excel import file and including that in the map. So we have address 1 goes to address 1, and then we click on that next field. Country is going to country. And we just kind of tick off each one to its related field in my Excel file. Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? We have a city. So I'm clicking the NetSuite city, and then I'm clicking my city making sure they line up. And next I have state. And I'm going to just click these off quickly. Zip code. And then the only two fields I have which are not mapped are default billing and default shipping. So I'll find them here. And click off the corresponding fields in my import file. Okay, and now we're all mapped. Each field in my Excel import file shows a green check mark next to it. I have all my required NetSuite fields populated, and I am ready to start the import. Once I'm done with my mapping, I can hit Next. And now I have the option of saving this map for future use. If in the future you know you're going to be using a file that has all the same columns and has basically the same information, you can save this import map and use it again later. And then NetSuite will do the mapping for you. I'm going to name this import map Matt's Customer Import. Maybe a little description to show. Use this import map when you are importing customer into NetSuite. And then I'm going to click Save and Run. And we'll see if I had any success. Hopefully I did. Once you hit Save and Run, uh, it gives you a confirmation that the import has started. And you can click right here at Import Job Status to view the status of that uh, CSV import you just kicked off. Alternatively, you can go to Setup, Import Export, and View CSV Import Status to view the status of that CSV import. Let's see. Okay, so this is the import I just ran on April 7, 2015 at 12.18 p.m. And customers only. Here's my email address to show that I'm the user who kicked this off. The status is complete, 100%. And it looks like I have three of three imports
imported uh, successfully, and that's good. If I did have any errors in my import, thankfully I don't, but if I did, I could click on CSC response, and that will open up a CSC file which shows each non-imported company and the reason why it was not imported. In this case, all records were imported successfully. Okay, so let's go and see the records I just imported and have a look at uh, make sure the information matches my Excel file. So to view customers, I'm going to go to Lists, Relationships, and then click on Customers. And there they are. Three customers imported all from my Excel import. ABC Industries, Business Solution Partners, and Wild Imports with the phone numbers. And let's go and view, uh, just for example, ABC Industries. Okay, I have my customer name and ID, the address, the phone number, sales rep, Matt Wertheim. And let's see how that matches my customer import file. ABC Industries, customer closed one, that's correct. Matt Wertheim, phone number, everything looks pretty good. Now if I want to go back to the list of customers, I can click on list here. And I just want to view one more. I'm going to view business solution partners since that had some slightly different information about the status and the addresses. This one, the status is not a customer close one, it's customer renewal, just like I indicated in my import file. And I also indicated that the address and this one didn't it was not the default shipping. So the address imported correctly. Let's go see if that imported correctly. Default billing is yes, which is correct. But default shipping is no. And that is also correct. So this is a good way to eye the the data that you imported and make sure it matches the import uh, the imported data that you had in your Excel file. All right, well that just about does it today. We covered viewing a CSV import file, starting off the process, whether or not we're going to add or update records, and then mapping, and then viewing the hopefully successful CSV import. Feel free to uh, check back at this recording anytime and give us a call if you have any questions. Have a great day.